Hi, I'm Mei. I recently changed my job and joined Google as a senior UX designer. For this video, I will talk about the basic interview process, the difference between big tech, general tech, and startups. So you will be prepared to handle all type of companies' interviews. I will also throw some tips and tricks for you to stand out. Changing job is really hard, especially for product designer or UX UI designer. So once you understand the interview process, it's easier to prepare all the materials that you will need. I will start with big tech, which is established technology companies such as FAN. I interviewed with Google, Meta, and LinkedIn. Gratefully got all the offers. There's minor differences between big tech interviews. But generally, there are five steps. Recruiter call, initial interview, on-site interview, team matching, and offer. You can take a screenshot if you're interested in these three companies' minor differences. I'll also link the official guidelines from some of the big tech. Let's dive into the first step. Recruiter call is very straightforward. It's always 30 minutes. Quick reminder here, treat your recruiter with respect. Greet them by asking how they're doing today and thank them for their time. Your recruiter has mutual interest with you, which is getting you hired. Recruiters will help as much as they can within the company's policies. I'm always being asked at least these two questions. Can you tell me about your background? What are you looking for for your next move? I have heard some stories that recruiters ask salary expectations. It's not a normal practice for the initial call. So I would say, let's discuss that after the interviews so that you can save the time to talk about more important topics. When you answer the first question, I have many mentees who can talk for 15 minutes about their background. It's way too long. Please shorten that within five minutes. You can see a template here. Let me give you a fake example. Pretend I was working at a tech startup. I'm Mei Sun. I'm currently working as a product design lead at Soul Technology for five years. My primary focus is to bring delightful mobile experiences for high school students to learn advanced math. And our mobile platform, MAU, has grown 50% since last year. Before that, I was a product designer working at Growth Education for two years. I also spent five years designing for a variety of startups. We can dive into that if you're interested. For the second question, the answer can be templated. Everyone has their own goal in pursuing their career. And recruiters know that. What they're really asking is why you want to join their company. I would recommend an honest answer that's aligned with your own goal slash interest. Don't say, I think your company is great, the best technology company out there. This answer is not wrong, but you're not bringing valuable insights into why you want to join the company, why you're interested in it. Is it because you want to change the industry to get closer to your personal interest? or you thrive in complexity, the company has more appealing problems for you to solve, or you want to help general public users to address their daily pain points. I'm just throwing a couple of uh, examples to get you started to think about your motivation. After the initial Q&A, recruiters will give you a quick walkthrough of what the interview process is like for the company. By the end, you can ask a couple of questions such as the timeline, any resources recruiters can share with you to better prepare your next interview. Now, let's dive into the second step, portfolio review and app critiques. Most big tech will start your interviews with portfolio review. Quick note here, put your case study in a presentation instead of showing your website. You don't want to lose an opportunity by lack of preparation. Some of the companies have app critique right after the portfolio review. So you will be asked to choose a popular mobile app that you and the interviewer both use, then dive into the product itself. After the second step, you will hear back from your recruiter whether or not you're invited to an on-site interview. I call this on-site interview 
as interview marathon. You need to bring the best version of yourself during this day. Breakfast is very necessary. Have plenty of water by you because you will talk the whole day. For the on-site interview, you will start with portfolio review again, very likely with a different interviewer or a group of interviewers. The recommended number for case studies is two to three, given the time constraints. A whiteboard session normally follows right after, aka design exercise, in which you will be prompted with a scenario or a problem. I want to remind you that this session is interactive. You need to ask questions to clarify if you, your understanding aligns with what the interviewer is looking for. Also, ask clarifying questions along the way. Don't be shy to ask for a hint if you're stuck. It shows the quality of you can proactively unblock yourself. Then you will have four to five one-on-one -on -one or two-on-ones with different interviewers who are likely to be user experience designers or other UXers. Each interviewer has a specific topic that they focus on, so all the questions are not repeated. The topics can be design leadership, collaboration, product thinking, problem solving, and design execution. Preparing your stories before the interview would be crucial. Lots of questions are asking you to dive into your past working experiences based on your behavior to better judge how well you can perform on the job. So that's a general walkthrough of the interview process if you are interested in big tech UX design roles. A quick note about the difference between a product designer versus UX designer is that product designer is a more generalist role. The responsibility includes research, strategy, usability, interface design, and user flow design. User experience designers' responsibility is more specialized. You're more focused on creating strategy, workflows, and execution. Big tech normally hires experts such as UX designers, since there are researchers and interface designers in place. This is not a rule of thumb that big tech only hires UX designers instead of product designers. But now you wouldn't be confused about what they are when you see those job titles. The interview process is normally the same. Now, I want to touch point on the difference between big tech interview versus general tech interview and startups. General tech companies are the ones that need to digitalize their existing business for their users, such as investment banks or insurance companies. The hand count is sponsored by a specific team, so you wouldn't have a team matching process. Another difference is that your interviewers will not only be designers, but also stakeholders such as engineers and product managers. Startups normally can have a faster interview process, um, and you will have the opportunity to talk with the CEO directly if the team is relatively small. Startup headcounts are limited, so they want to have candidates that's not afraid of getting their hands dirty and eager to try everything, including animations or marketing. Throughout the interview process, I was following up actively with all my recruiters and getting the latest updates. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask the results if you haven't heard back after three days. A general interview tip is that a company is not only hiring for skills, but also personalities. Each of your interviewers is thinking about whether or not they can work with you daily. So when you prepare your interviews, you might want to record yourself and play back. That's the quickest way I find to raise self-awareness during interviews. If you have questions or insights about the interview process, leave me a comment and let's share knowledge together.